In my previous video, I demonstrated how this pulse dialing to DTMF or, or touch tone converter board could be wired inside an old rotary dial phone like uh, the Western Electric 302 phone you see here from the uh, 40s, 50s, well, 40s and 50s primarily, and uh, allow it to work on a modern VoIP or modern landline uh, system. Most hardwired landline systems uh, even today still support tone dialing, but a lot of the uh, increasingly popular voice over IP or VoIP solutions using these common ATAs or analog telephone adapters will not support rotary dial uh, phones directly. So retrofitting one of these into the internals of the phone will allow that to uh, will allow this old phone to work quite well with with uh, one of those VoIP adapters. We'll leave that here. Now I talked about before, demonstrated all the usual conversion functions, but there was a third function I mentioned that I had added in the code, which was the blue box or the phone freak mode of interest primarily to phone freaks. Now phone freaks for the uninitiated were a group of telephone enthusiasts that existed from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and even into the 80s, and even up until the present day that were interested in fooling around with the phone system to see what they could find. And what they discovered was that the, um, the Bell system had used a series of different tones to control their internal long distance network. Those are different from the touch tone uh, tones that are dialed by a customer uh, end device like a you know, regular telephone. Uh, the phone company had a different set of tones that would basically take whatever you dialed, if it was a long distance call, and repeat those on their internal trunks in a different set of tones. And what the phone freaks found is by playing a certain tone, uh, namely 2600 hertz, 2600 cycles per second, they could seize an an existing long distance call and then they could redirect it if they could come up with a way of generating these special uh, multi-frequency tones that were not touch tones, a totally different set of tones. And a lot of them built boxes that were called blue boxes and those uh, devices were capable of replicating the, uh, the telephone company's tones. And basically what it allowed you to do is become an operator from any telephone and you could make free telephone calls you could access internal company, uh, telephone company codes and uh, locations that were only accessible to operators, including even tapping uh, telephone uh, conversations on uh, individual lines in some cases. So there are a lot of things you could do with it, and it was quite, became quite a problem for Mobile until the technology changed to make it um, uh, really impractical to use that method any longer. And today that system is completely dead. Now what I've done is I've created um, an asterisk uh, PBX server that is capable of receiving those old tones and recreating the blue box experience for those who weren't able to uh, or weren't around back then or weren't active in the phone freak scene. I was and I had a good time with it and didn't get into too much trouble but a lot of people did and <laughs> But it didn't stop them, and um, the FBI got to cracking down on phone freaks in a big way. But it's all legal now, at least if you dial in through my system. So we're going to do that here, and I'm going to demonstrate how this, this allows you to actually blue box using a rotary dial phone, which is like a very strange concept. Normally you would take a, um, a, a blue box, which was an external device, hold it up to the mouthpiece of the phone, and generate these special tones, but this actually does it <laughs> internal to this. So this device with this programming has all of the uh, pulse to DTMF conversion features that I demonst demonstrated in my earlier video, but with the added feature, uh, if you choose to program the chip with the code that supports it, the added feature of the, the blue box mode. So I'm not going to give a whole lot of technical information about how it works, I'm just going to kind of talk about it if you've ever done any blue boxing or fooled around with Project MF, you'll understand uh, pretty much what I'm doing here. I got a little kitty cat in the background watching. So we're going to take this off hook and I'm going to dial into Project MF. And Project MF is going to connect us into a trunk on my asterisk PBX that is capable of responding to 
uh, MF tones and the 2600 supervisory tone, which we're going to generate using this circuit, using this dial phone. I've got this hooked up to a speaker in the background, so we'll be able to hear what's going on, and let's give it a try. So we'll put the receiver here onto a towel to keep the feedback down, and we'll dial Project MF locally. Okay, so now we're connected into a trunk that's going to do nothing but ring. However, if I were to play 2600 hertz down the line, that trunk would be seized and I would be able to redirect it using these special multi-frequency tones. Now right now the phone is in normal DTMF conversion mode. So I can dial. Nothing really happens because uh, I'm playing normal, normal touch tones. However, <clears throat> what I can do is go into blue box mode by holding the three digit against the stop for uh, four seconds total until I hear it two beeps. After the second beep I'll release it, I'll hear an ascending series of three confirmation tones. And thereafter the uh, unit will be in blue box mode, so let's do that. We are now in blue box mode, so if I dial, instead of playing touch tones or DTMF tones, it's going to play MF or multi-frequency tones. And so forth. If I want to play the KP or K-pulse tone, which is used to initiate a number sequence, I merely dial and hold 1. After the first beep I release it, that's the KP or key pulse tone. Uh, the ringing timed out, but we're still on the trunk, by the way. This is the ST or start tone. And that terminates the dialing sequence. So uh, those two tones, those two special bracketing tones, the, the key pulse and the start tone, and uh, the normal digit tones are all that's needed to basically seize the trunk and take over and redirect the call. The one tone that uh, I haven't demonstrated is the 26 hertz tone. In uh, MF mode or, or blue box mode, the uh, redial, last number redial function is disabled. Uh, and in favor of that, normally you'd hold the three against the stop, wait for a beep and release it. That would play back the um, last number dialed. However, in blue box or MF mode, it will play back the 2600 tone, so it's not possible to use the last number redialed. And in fact, uh, MF tones don't get, uh, in MF mode, don't get read into the last number memory at all. It's totally disabled. However, you can program in uh, MF tone sequences into any of the memories when you're in MF mode, including a 2600 hertz tone. We'll demonstrate that. And those uh, memories, uh, the tone mode is actually stored in the uh, memory of the tone sequence. So you can store up to 32 uh, MF sequences, including 2600, or up to 32 DTMF tones in any one of the memories. And um, you can mix them in the same memory, but you can have a mixture on different memory locations. So that's kind of handy if you're in the MF mode and you need to dial an access number. You can store that in DTMF mode, switch to MF mode, and still have access to that, to that uh, number by just playing back that memory. So right now we're timed out. We'll, we'll manually dial a um, Evan Doorbell recording that uh, I have on the server. And the first thing we'll do is play 2600. We'll play key pulse, a three-digit routing code, and then start to connect us into the uh, recording which is exactly what a blue box user would have done back in the day. You know, I should explain. Um, we're going to hear a timeout here. The number you have dialed is not in service. Please check the number and try again. And we don't get disconnected because of the way I have it set up. Uh, after you play the 2600, you hear a, a wink back 
acknowledgement from the switch. That's exactly what happened back in the day. You would play 2600. It made the long distance system think you had hung up the call when you really hadn't. And it would uh, hang up the far end of whatever number you had dialed, typically an 800 number. You'd play the 2600, remove it, and uh, the far end of the trunk would wink back at you indicating it was ready to receive a series of digits and it would reroute the call to where, basically wherever you told it to. So that's what we're doing here. So that little kerchief you hear after the 2600 stops playing is the acknowledgement and then you've got five seconds to start dialing with your key pulse tone or you get that timeout message. So that's just a little background as to what you're hearing. Let's do it again and I'll do it without interruption. So what I've done basically is intercept that uh, original call that was into the trunk and I've redirected it to um, to this recording. Now I can blow this call off by playing 2600 again and redirect it to another recording. Dialed. Let's try it again. The number you have dialed, one six three three, is not available. I work that time. The problem is the receivers are very sensitive to any kind of noise on the line. And I think what's happening is because of the speaker connection I have in parallel with the phone line, we're running into some issues with uh, hum pickup from the fluorescent light and so forth. But in general, it, it works just fine. So uh, we're able to dial into a number of interesting numbers like CNET, the Collectors Network, NPSTN. And uh, even a landline call can be made using the system if you've got a blue box. So basically, the, um, this unit, uh, despite, uh, besides uh, doing pulse to DTMF conversion, turns a rotary phone into a, into a blue box. Now, I'll demonstrate the memory functionality while we're on this recording. So if I wanted to pre-record a sequence um, and... Um, play it back later because you didn't want to do all the dialing. Uh, I can do that. We'll hold six down till we hear two beeps. And now we can dial our sequence. We'll do 2600. And we won't actually hear the tone. We just hear the confirmation beep because we're in programming mode. So that's 2600. Uh, then we'll dial key pulse. And then one, four, three, start. And now that's programmed in. Uh, I don't want to go off hook here, but um, normally you would hang up to save it. It actually is already saved, so we can just um, should be able to just play 2600 and then access that memory. So let's give that a try. Oops, <laughs> I, just, I just added another digit to the end of what I dialed. All right, let's, let's start over here. So we'll dial into Project MF again. We'll have to go back into DTMF mode. Okay, now we'll go back into MF mode. Oops. No, we won't. The 
number you have dialed to. Oop. My bad. <laughs> Now we're in. Now we'll go into MF mode. Now we'll play back that sequence I recorded. There'll be an extra digit at the end, but it won't matter. So we'll try it. Well, it looks like the recording didn't take, so let's do it again. We're in recording mode. 2600. Key pulse. One, two, three. Start. Hang up. DTMF mode. This time I'm going to program a speed dial with the access number for Project MF. We're going to put that in 4. So now in 4 we've got a DTMF sequence to dial Project MF. In 5 we have the actual 2600 and the MF tone so we, and uh, these can be accessed sequentially so we don't have to switch modes. Let's try it again. Going into MF mode. And now we're going to dial the DTMF sequence out of memory. That'll get us into Project MF. Now 5 will play back a 2600 plus an MF sequence. Um, as I mentioned, the tone mode is stored into memory, so you can mix them up that way. Let's try it. The number you have dialed. Doesn't always work. Uh, sometimes the tones are a bit loud, but we'll try again. So it's having a little trouble with the tones. What I'm going to do is lengthen out the, um, the tones a little bit. And I'm going to do that by uh, changing the tone duration as I demoed in the other tape. We can do that by holding down 2 for 2 beeps. And we'll... So that's 3 beeps, so 3 times 50 milliseconds. We've extended the tone duration to 150 milliseconds. And now let's try doing the... MF sequence again at slightly longer dialing uh, uh, digit duration. Oops. Now the MF sequence. That time it worked. So I'd like to, with this setup here, I'd like a little longer digit length for recognition. And we can uh, blow it off and reseize it and redial it again. Oop. Could tell it didn't hear it right. <laughs> I think what's happening here is that um, because the receiver is in parallel with the speaker, I think it's picking up some echo and a, a little bit of feedback that's affecting the dialing reliability. But in general, it works pretty well. So it's kind of a novelty feature. It really is not essential to the pulse to 
uh, touchstone conversion feature, but I thought it would be kind of neat and kind of novel to include a blue box functionality in, uh, in a dial phone, which this does in addition to all the cool other features. Uh, I have the code for both the non-MF and the MF uh, blue box versions up on my uh, GitHub site, which I'll put below this in a link. Uh, it is forked off the previous developer's um, GitHub site, so be sure you pick up the correct fork off of his code. Don't take his original code because it won't have a lot of the enhanced features. So be sure you choose the correct fork in GitHub when you go to download the code. All of the information about programming this, the schematic diagram, uh, programming instructions, pre-compiled hex code uh, is all there. And um, if you have any questions about it, just direct a message to me via YouTube. And I'd be happy to try to answer any questions you might have. Thanks for watching it. Kind of a weird thing, uh, blue boxing from a dial phone, but it can be done.